الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة صدق الله مولانا علي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم يا كريم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim to continue with the 199th covenant from the Muhammadan covenants. If you remember from last week, we're talking about how it is of paramount importance for a murid to gain ijazah from his shaykh and to, be tr to undergo spiritual training before he emerges as a shaykh. So one such incident about how those whom their mashaykh, whom their uh, shuyukh would give ijazah, but in spite of this they would still wait for an ijazah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One such incident we mention now, he says, وَأَخْبَرَنِي مَرَّةً بِأَنَّ شَيْخَهُ سَيِّدِي مُحَمَّدًا إِبْنَ أُخْتِي سَيِّدِي مَدْيَنَ كَانَ عَزِيزَ الْإِذْنِ One day, Shaykh Ali al marsafi if you remember Shaykh Ali al marsafi rahimahullah, he mentions him before, one of the last of the Mashaykh of Egypt, who was a true Shaykh in the true sense of the word Shaykh. And he says, that the same Shaykh narrates to Imam Shi'arani rahimahullah, that he's Shaykh Sayyidi Muhammad. Who was Sayyidi Muhammad rahimahullah? He was the nephew of Shaykh Abu Madian al-Maghribi. Shaykh Abu Madian al-Maghribi, great, great, great Ghawth of his age. Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Sayyidi Madian. Ibn Ukht, the son of his sister. Of Shaykh Abu Madian's sister. Yani nephew. كان عزيز الإذن, he rarely would give ijazah to people to his uh, muridun or anyone to sit uh, on the mashikha and start to instruct people and start, start to initiate people in the tariqah, the path of suluk. فَقَالَ لِي يَا عَلِي أُبْرُزْ فَقَدْ جَاءَكَ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ One day my shaykh, great shaykh, told me, O oh Ali al marsifi you now need to emerge as a shaykh. Because I've, I've, I've been, uh, this ijazah has been, uh, has been uh, given from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But look at the ihtiyat, look at the precaution. فَقَبَّلْتُ <laughs> yadu I kissed his hands and I, وَلَمْ abruz, But I did not emerge as a shaykh. You know, you remember that incident of Imam Junid al-Baghdadi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when his shaykh, Shaykh Sayyid al-Saqati, rahimahullah, told him, okay. خَوْفًا أَنْ يَكُونَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ مَكْرِ الْأَشْيَاخِ بِالْمُرِيدِ كَمَا وَقَعَ لِغَيْرِ Out of fear, I did not emerge as a shaykh out of fear that this, what he is telling me to do, might be a secret plan of my shaykh to test me. As my shaykh had tested other muridun, they test people. So I didn't. And I, 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 I took the words of my shaykh to mean, وَمُرَادُ الشَّيْخْ أَذِنَ لَكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تبرز ونحوها بالإذن العام. What my shaykh was saying that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has given a general ijazah for people to wander and go around into the deserts. So I thought my Shaykh Al-Buruz here means that not to emerge as a Shaykh, but actually emerge and go to wander and to do siyaha. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ سَيْرْ فِي الْأَرْضِ I interpret his words to be this. 
So Shaykh Ali Marusafi then said, فَمَكَثْتُ حَتَّى جَاءَنِ الْأَمْرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى I waited and waited and waited until ijaza came directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَبَرَزْتُ He is in at that moment in time, I emerged as a shaykh. Now when you get ijaza from Allah and direct ijaza from the Prophet, so what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives immense barakah and benefit. Through you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives benefit to humanity. Okay. وَجَلَسْتُ فِي بَلَدِ مَرْصَفَةً فَلَقَّنْتُ نَحْوَ الْعَشْرَةِ آلَافِ فَقِيرٍ I sat in my town, Marsafa, and I instructed 10,000 disciples, 10,000 people, I instructed them in the path of suluk, in the path of tariqah. 10,000. فَجَأَنِ الشَّيْخُ عَبْدُ الْقَادِرَ الدُّشْتُدْوِ I remained in my city, in my town, Marsafa, instructing the muridun, disciplining them, training them, giving them instruction in the path of tasawwuf. So one day, Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Dushtuti, rahimahullah, subhanah, great wali of Allah. We were honored to visit his Mazar Sharif in Cairo. Just very close to the Bab al-Sha'ariyah, very close to the Maqam of Yom al-Sha'anif. This Shaykh Abdul Qadir al-Dushtuti was one, was this person, he mentions about him. When he went to Al-Madinah al-Munawara, when he stood at Babu salam to enter the sacred proceeds to proceed to give salam to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was overwhelmed with so much awe of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallama, he fell unconscious. Uh, and he, that reminds me of the Allah's Rahmatullah's couplet. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina. غش سے ہمیں اٹھائے کیوں سوتے ہیں ان کے سائے میں کوئی ہمیں جگائے کیوں چلو بعد میں انشاءاللہ اس کی اصلاح کی جائے گی so, سبحان اللہ he was unconscious سوتے ہیں ان کے سائے میں and he only regained consciousness when the qafala when the caravan was returning back and he was so he had so much respect or he was awestruck, reverence for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Nabhani Allah, Qutb Madina, Sayyid Ziyauddin, Qutb Madina, Qutb Madina, Shaykh Ziyauddin Ahmad al-Madani, Rahimahullah, the Khalifa of Allah, Zerahmatullah, he said, one day I asked Imam Nabhani, Rahimahullah, and he had, uh, he had also got ijazah from, uh, like Allah, Zerahmatullah, he also got ijazah from Imam Nabhani, and Imam Shaykh Badruddin al-Hassani from Damascus. Shaykh Qudbi Madina Rahimah last Huzoor, all of us enter the sacred uh, presence of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We send our salams. You, I always see you conveying salam from outside. Shaykh Qudbi Madina Rahimah Allah said, I am the dog of the court of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't regard myself as worthy to enter the sacred presence. The dogs remain outside the home, not inside. And we are talking about someone who had beheld the vision of the Prophet ﷺ for more than 50 times in a wakeful state, not just in a dream, in a wakeful state. So, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Dushtuti Rahimullah said, he came to Shaykh Ali Marsafi and said, Ya Ali, Qum, ukhruj suh fil ard, wa khalli hadha taqeed. Shaykh Abdul Qadir Dushtuti Rahimullah came to him and said, Oh Ali, Stand up, go out, emerge, and spread this knowledge of tasawwuf and the, your blessings in the entire world. Why are you restricting yourself here in your own city, in Bolton, or in, you know, Marsafa, rahimahullah, as the Shaykh, rahimahullah, was? فَقُلْتُ لَهُ أَلَّائِقُ بِي مَا أَنَا فِي وَاللَّائِقُ بِكَ مَا أَنْتَ فِي فَانْصَرَفَ He said, whatever I'm in, that is more appropriate to me. Whatever you're doing, that is more appropriate to you. Yani, I am happy with what I'm doing, and I think I will benefit mankind in the best manner, whilst I'm sat here in my city, in my hometown. I needn't go out. You do that, because that is more appropriate to you. And then the Shaykh left. Anyhow. وَقَالِ لِمَرَّةً يَا وَلَدِي لَا يَصِحُ الْإِذْنُ لِفَقِيرِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم حَتَّى يَقْطَعَ مِئَتَيْ أَلْفِ مَقَامٍ وَسَبْعَةٍ وَأَرْبَعِينَ أَلْفِ مَقَامٍ 
One day, the Shaykh Ali al Safi rahimahullah told me that no one is able to seek direct permission from the Prophet ﷺ. No one is able to consult the Prophet ﷺ directly. Aaj log dawa karte hain ki humne direct Nabi Karim Sallam se ijazat li. Imam Shaani mentions in Lataiful Minar, and he mentions in, at this point as well that no one, no Sufi or no Shaykhs claim to directly take knowledge or direct consult the Prophet ﷺ is valid except after he proves that he has traversed 247 thousands of uh, stations of tasawwuf and tariqah until he reaches that stage in which he is able to directly consult the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do lakh 47000 maqamat tay karne ke baad aadmi is layak banta hai ki wo direct bil mushafa nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam se istifada aur istifada kar sakta hai aap se ijazat talab kar sakta hai ala zara rahmatullah alai ye to hum bayan karte hain na ala zara rahmatullah alai ilm al jafar the knowledge of you can say the secrets of the letters in that science, you need to seek ijazah from the Prophet ﷺ. We all say this, we all mention this in our speeches, but people don't go deep. Deeply, when you contemplate on this statement of his, Allah had already traversed 247,000 maqamat to reach a station where he was able to seek ijazah from the Prophet ﷺ, not just for himself, but for other people. Because one day, someone came from al Madinah and Munawar, remember that incident that he mentions in al futh Someone came from al Madinah and Munawar to seek ijazah, please teach me ilm al-Jafar. He said, I will seek ijazah from the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ gave ijazah. Yeah? And again, another point that Imam Shani mentions for you to behold the Prophet in a wakeful state, he also mentions certain maqamat. Allah wrote one kalam. Out of humbleness, he says, And with this one couplet that he had, because remember, two, three days constantly he was. He was wanting to, yearning to behold the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one couplet and all of the veils were lifted. All of the maqamat he traversed. Rahimullah. This is why there's a lot of spiritual barakah in Allah's kalam. Allah's kalam is very barakah. For example, uh, one of the mashayikh, they say if someone doesn't have children, they should, or uh, male children, especially they should make this dua. They should read this couplet. Sababo chale ke baag phale wo phool khile ke din ho bhale liwa ke tale thana me khule raza ki zaba tumhare li iska vird kare inshallah jisko kai bimari ho shafi ho nafi ho tum kafi ho wafi ho tum dard ko kar do dawa tum pe karun anyhow fasluk ya akhi ala yad shaykh li ta'rif al tariq wa makharisaha wa mahalikaha so oh my brother tread the path of suluk under the guidance of a sincere shaykh so that you become aware of the ways in which Satan can deceive a person. There's many, many ways. Imam Al-Ghazali has an entire chapter, Maka'id al-Shaytan, the ways in which Satan tricks people. He has many, many tricks. <coughs> many tricks he pulls from his hat. The way in which he, he will deceive the scholars, the way in which he will deceive the worshippers, the way in which he will deceive the commons. The way he will deceive the kings, the rulers, the leaders. So tread the path of suluk at the hands of a sheikh who will diagnose you, who will, you know, put you under a, you can say, the MM, MIR scan, the, the shuyukh, and he, they, all of you, all of the inner traits will come manifest, so that you understand the ways in which Satan is will destroy mahalika the ways of the, the, the paths of destruction the places of destruction in tasawwuf wa tasira in i'tazalta takunu uzlatuka bi haqqin wa in khalatta takunu mukhalatatuka bi haqqin and that you become in such a manner that if you withdraw from people your withdrawal and isolation is on is on is on, is based on the truth and if you mix with people, intermingle with them, your intermingling and socializing with them is based on truth. Because if we don't understand the do's and the don'ts, the positives and the negatives, 
and the times when we should withdraw from people and when we should isolate with them and when we should uh, socialize with them, we will be paving our way towards destruction. This is why he then says, Otherwise, you will be following caprice, your whimsical desires. Whether you are close to people, whether you are away from them. He says, If you socialize with people and you've not understood when and how to socialize with them and intermingle with them and the limits of that, you will be intermingling with them based on dunyawi reasons, based on worldly reasons. And if you isolate yourself from them, it will be based on your evil suspicion regarding them. Yani, I am better than them. This is why he says, alayhim, And you wanting to hold a distinction from amongst them. You know, I am better than them. I am better than ये लोग गीबत एक नहीं कुछ लोग ऐसा होता है ना वो अलग हो जाते हैं और कहते हैं कि फिर सारे लोगों के बारे में कहते हैं कि वो लोग गीबतें करते हैं ये करते हैं वो करते हैं मैं उनसे अच्छा हूं अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह यानी लव्जो लव्जो में अपनी तारीफ भी कर देते हैं जैसे गुजराती में क्या कहते हैं बोलू तो ना जो है पन एंड देन आफ्टर दैट बट एवरीथिंग कम्स पूरी लिस्ट मेरी इखलास भी तो होना चाहिए and this person withdrawing himself from people is and he, he was not given ijazah from a shaykh and he did not understand the subtleties of khalwa he will do, be doing khalwa on the basis of whimsical desires and in actual fact he will be in a worse situation than those people who intermingle so we need to understand this kama huwa mushahidun as is witnessed wa aqallu maratib ash-shaykh idha zahara an yakuna a'bada min sa'ir muridihi wa a'lam minhum wa azhada minhum wa awra'a minhum wa akhwafa min Allah this is a nasiha for every single shaykh every single peer every single kya kehte hain aap apni zuban mein baba sahib kya in kya nasihat farmate hain it the least degree of any shaykh, any peer, any baba is an yakuna a'bada min muridi that he is he is the he has more worship he is more worshipful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is a greater worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than all of his murids do we see this? murid prays five times shaykh says khalas we pray in haram sharif and then we eat al bake fake shaykh he should be an, a greater ardent worshipper than his murid. And should have more knowledge than his murids. Like Imam Shani did, you know, remember? Uh, the, the Sheikh who came in his the so called Sheikh with his followers, with his, you know, uh, blind followers, the sheep, the sheeple group that came behind him and asked him, please tell me the faraid the wudu. Imam Shani says this. In Tanbih al muhtarin And the Shaykh said, brother, uh, any, uh, 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 please forgive me, I don't know. He says, Jao pehle, wudu ke faraid seekho. Namaz ke faraid seekho, namaz ki sharaid seekho. Ye sare farz uloom hai. Phir, ja kar ke kahi, apne murido ka halqa bana. Grave realities, unfortunately, this, he mentioned this 500 years ago, approximately, 400 years ago. And no one's paid heed to his words, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. The shaykh should be a'la minhum, the most knowledgeable from among them, should have more knowledge than them. Wa'azhada min, should have more asceticism than them, should have more contentment in the heart in comparison to his disciples. Wa'awra'a minhum, he should be more circumspect. More cautious of halal than his murids. <coughs> and he should have the greatest fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in comparison to his disciples. This is why the Prophet there is no murid like the Prophet There is astaghfirullah. There is no shaykh like Rasulullah and there is no murid like Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu as he mentions this. And, and talking about the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet said, "Ana a'lamukum billah wa atqaqum aw wa akhshaqum lah." I have the greatest knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa taala in comparison to all of you. I have the greatest ma'rif of Allah. 
And the more ma'rifah you have, the Prophet then followed it by saying, wa akhshakum lahu, wa atqaakum lahu. And having said this, I have the greatest fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than all of you. فَلَا تَجِبُ أَتْعَبَ قَلْبًا وَلَا بَدَلًا مِنَ الشَّيْخِ إِذَا نَصَحَ فِي تَرِيقِ You will not see someone who is more spiritually, emotionally, physically exhausted than a shaykh. Spiritually, why? Undergoes mujahada. Physically, why? Undergoes worship. You will never see anyone who exhausts his, himself more in the worship of Allah than a true shaykh when he's sincere in this path. وَأَمَّا إِذَا غَشَّ نَفْسَهُ وَأَتْبَعَهُ فَهُوَ مِنْ حِزْبِ إِبْلِيسِ يعني سيدي كأديا. No ifs or no buts, no, you know, um, what, what do you call beating around the bush or cutting corners. Saf loves him If he cheats himself and his followers, then he is not from Hezbollah, he is from the Hizb, the group of Satan, of Iblis. فَإِنَّهُ مَتَارَ الْمُرِيدَ أَنَّهُ أَعْلَمُ أَوْ أَعْبَدُ مِنَ الشَّيْخِ عَدَمَ النَّفْعَ بِهِ Because when such a person sees his murid, more knowledgeable than him, more worshipping than him, he will not take benefit from that murid. He said, I have greater knowledge than you and I'm a greater worshipper than you. He will cease, discontinue benefiting, t- uh, seeking benefit from that person. Wallahu yahdi man yasha'u ila sirati mustaqeem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whomever he wills to the straight path. One hadith I will finish, finish inshallah. Next we will continue with the concluding hadith in this chapter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The chapter if you remember was on withdrawal, seclusion. Let's listen to this hadith. This is in Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 2965. An Amir. عن عامر بن سعد قال كان سعد بن أبي وقاص رضي الله في إبله فجاء ابنه عمر فلما رأه سعد قال أعوذ بالله من شر هذا الراكب فنزل فقال له أنا زلت في إبلك وغنمك وتركت الناس يتنازعون الملك ملك بينهم فضرب سعد في صدره فقال أسكت سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الله تعالى يحب العبد التقي الغني الخفي أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم سيدنا عامر بن سعد رضي الله منشنز that سيدنا سعد ابن أبي وقاص رضي الله who was he the first one who threw an arrow in the way of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the one for whom the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إرمي يا سعد في ذاك أبي وأمي the entire universe says, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi ya Rasulullah. But the Prophet said, Oh Sad, shoot these arrows against the kuffar. At the kuffar, may my parents be a ransom on you. Said Sa'd ibn Waqas, Mustajabu da'awa. His prayers were never left unanswered. They were always answered. The famous incident of what happened when he was appointed as a governor in Iraq. Anyhow, so he withdrew himself. He took to the folds of his camels where he had his camels and his life, so he used to tend to them. He didn't mix with people, was not, uh, con- uh, was not uh, socializing with them. So one day, his son Umar radiallahu came riding on a mount. And because Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Waqas radiallahu was in isolation, he thought that this rider has come with a fitna. So he said, as soon as he saw the rider from Afa, he said, A'udhu billahi min shari hadha raqib. I seek refuge with Allah from the evil of this rider. But when he drew near, it was his son. Fanazala. So he disembarked the ride. Faqala lahu, the son said to the father, Sa'ad ibn Waqas radiallahu anhu, Anazalta fi ibilik wa ghanamik, you are engaged in your camels and in your livestock. You know, in the subhanah, later on in the hadith, it mentions that, Jiskat tabila hoga, wo bach gaya. Yani tabila aap log jo apni zubani mein kehte hain. Jiska wo, jiske khet honge, jiske paas bakriyon ka river hoga, aur wo pahariyon pe chala jayega, wo uska iman mehfuz hoga. As the hadith mentions later on. You are here, tending to your camels, looking after your camels, and your livestock, and your sheep. Whilst you have left people, they are contending, disputing with one another, contending with one another for kingdom and sovereignty and leadership. They have, they have drawn swords against one another. Fitan. فَضَرَبُوا سَعَدُ فِي صَدْرِهِ Sayyidina Sa'ad struck him in the chest, his son. And he says, Uskut, remain silent, because verily I heard the Messenger of Allah say, Indeed Allah loves 
Al Abd al Taqi, the God conscious servant. Al Ghani, the one who is content with the little, the one who doesn't have, uh, who's free from wants and desires. Al Khafi, the one who is isolated from society, withdraws from society. Having said this, just going to finish with this few points, inshallah. Again, what we need to understand the nuances of khalwa, withdrawal. Where do we draw the line? As for the ulama, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have granted knowledge, and they are deeply rooted in ilm and amal and ikhlas, and they ulama rabbaniyin, they must, as the ulama Imam al-Ghazali mentioned, they must socialize and intermingle with people and enjoy good and forbid evil. I'll mention an incident that Allah Zerahmul mentions in al mulfud about Shaykh Abu Ishaq al-Isfarayini, rahimahullah. There was fitan, yani the fitan of the Mu'tazilis who had brainwashed people with heretical beliefs opposing the aqidah of the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And there were some ulama who had, in order to safeguard their iman, they had isolated in the mountaintops. So Shaykh Abu Hisaq Isfarani rahimahullah went to them and said, you need the ummah of the Prophet the flock of the Muhammadan ummah is being attacked by wolves. Yet you are here isolated in mountaintops. They said, by Allah, we are not able to withstand that fitan. Rightly so, because fitan, as the Prophet says, like, they will be like sheets of a dark night. You go. As he went, he said, okay, then I will be the, she- I will be the uh, barking shepherd's dog for the ummah of the Prophet and Allah Zarahmatullah says he continued in commas barking, yani warning people, warning the flock of sheep, the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, as Allah Zarahmatullah refers to this ummah many a times in his preamble to faith, tamheed the iman. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants refuge to this ummah at the hands of Shaykh Ali Farayani rahimullah. He was seen in a dream and because of this amal of his, Allah subhanahu wa granted him salvation. Let me tell you, finish with this incident. Allama Hashmat Ali Khan Rahmatullah. Everyone knows him. Shayyid Bay Shay Ahl Sunnat. Subhanallah. The great debate of the Ahl Sunnah. The line of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. When Allah Zara Rahmatullah passed away, he used to frequently visit the Mazar of, the, uh, of Allah Zara Rahmatullah. And one day he decided, you know, all of these fitan that have arisen after Allah Zara Rahmatullah, I want to withdraw. No debates, no teaching. Uzla. So one day he went to the Mazar of Allah Zarahmatullah. He said, I'm, Today I'm just going to cut off from society, just engage in wird wazaif, dhikr askar, mashagil of tasawwuf, you know, finish. Allah Zarahmatullah came to him. One, one narration actually says, in a wakeful state, vision experience. There's other vision experiences he had from the Mazar of Allah Zarahmatullah. I'm not going to mention, I'm going to mention that later on. And Allah Zarahmatullah told him, Oh, my son, Hashmat Ali, student of um, Khali- An Khalifa Allah Allah sent him to debate the heretics at the age of 18 and gave him the title Abu Al-Fatih. Ah, subhanallah. One debate, he actually mentions that I was debating with the heretic and I could not remember one passage. I was flicking through the book and I could not remember what page it was. And he says, Allah appeared in, fr- in front of me in a visionary spiritual state. And he mentioned to me, turn to this page. And then he vanished, disappeared. I would turn to that page and the ibarah was there. Anyhow, Allah said, oh, oh my son Hashmat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you in a position of guiding people. Your guiding people and dispelling the heretics is greater than Wird Wazaif. Allah will give you more reward to guide the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam than you isolating yourself and engaging in wird wadaif and mashagil. That will benefit yourself, but he will benefit yourself and the entire ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then when he, subhanallah, uh, came, emerged, subhanallah, the masses were granted benefit and the deviants were guided by him radiyallahu ta'ala wa rada so this is what we conclude upon allah ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala amal kami kita wa fiqh ta'ala farmai amin ya rabbal